You're strolling through the CIA headquarters because that's totally something you do casually on a weekday, right? When suddenly, smack in the middle of this fortress of secrecy and spies, you spot something huh. odd. It's a massive, curving copper sculpture etched with rows upon rows of seemingly random letters. It feels like something out of an Indiana Jones movie or maybe a Dan Brown novel. You lean in, eyebrows scrunched, because these letters, they don't form words, at least not any that you've seen. Welcome to Cryptos, the world's most famous unsolved code that's been chilling in plain sight for well over 30 years. And despite the fact that it's literally sitting at CIA headquarters, a building full of the world's best code breakers, this thing is still keeping its final secrets to itself. So what is Cryptos? Who put it there? And can AI now be the thing that finally cracks it open once and for all? Well, buckle up, buttercup, because we're talking government secrets today. In the late 80s, the CIA was jazzing up its shiny new headquarters in Langley, Virginia, because apparently government buildings tend to be a little, you know, gray and drab. So the CIA's Fine Arts Commission, which is a real thing, set aside some cash specifically to commission some new artwork. Enter Jim Sanborn, a Washington DC based artist who didn't just land a random art grant, but specifically won a $250,000 commission to build something uniquely cryptic. Sanborn wasn't your average sculptor either. He was obsessed with secrecy, cryptography, and hidden messages, making him practically perfect for the CIA gig. Even better, Sanborn paired up with Edward Sheet, a former CIA cryptographer, to design something intentionally baffling. Their brainchild was Cryptos, a copper sculpture pierced through with an encrypted puzzle rated almost impossible on the cryptographic scale. It was officially installed on November 3rd, 1990. Now, Sanborn figured someone would crack it within 10 years or so, but here we are over three decades later, and Cryptos is still stubbornly holding on to its final secret, at least as far as the public knows. Here's how Cryptos works. The sculpture features four distinct blocks of encrypted text, 865 letters in total. Each block becomes commonly known as K1, K2, K3, and K4. But that fourth segment, K4, yeah, it is basically the giant middle finger pointed directly at cryptographers everywhere. And Cryptos isn't just a sequence of encrypted letters carved into copper. Its design includes several thoughtful symbolic components that deepen the cryptic narrative. Alongside the main sculpture is a petrified tree trunk to symbolize the enduring nature of information. And next to that lies a reflective pool of water representing the continuous flow, exchange, and transmission of secrets. This water installation, by the way, it's a, actually a pretty common one for government-funded art. Additionally, slabs of granite placed strategically around the installation feature engraved Morse code messages. Notably, these Morse code engravings themselves have intentional irregularities and some subtle hints to them. These things aren't considered enough when considering Cryptos as a whole, and it's important to give them the bit of spotlight that they deserve here. Many enthusiasts believe that these additions may create a secret fifth puzzle that won't publicly be disclosed. Collectively, these physical elements are integral to the experience of the sculpture and reinforce the themes of the agency that funded it. Initially, when Cryptos was unveiled in 1990, the CIA reportedly encouraged its employees to make attempts at solving it. K1 through K3 were secretly cracked within two years by both NSA analysts and CIA employees, although the agencies chose not to publish their solutions immediately, presumably because nothing's cooler than government secrets staying secret. Let's just leave this fun little fact in the back of our brains for later. The first three solved segments turned out to be puzzles combining multiple cipher techniques. This included transposition ciphers and visionaire ciphers, essentially just sophisticated methods of scrambling different letters. The decoded texts were oddly poetic. For instance, K1 delivered a cryptic sentence that read, between subtle shading and the absence of light lies the nuance of occlusion. Yes, illusion spelled with a Q, because obviously this was never intended to be straightforward. The second solve segment, K2, provided some actual coordinates that you can see on screen here, and punching those into a map drops you squarely into CIA property. 
What I find interesting about this is the message suggested something hidden or buried right beneath the surface, prompting speculation about secret stashes or even buried treasure, because nothing about this puzzle will ever scream casual art projects. There's also a mention in K2 of only WW knows, strongly believed to refer to the then CIA director William Webster, supposedly the only guy who knows what's really going down there, but you'll find that might not be entirely true as we go on. K3 took things even further, describing a scene reminiscent of uncovering a secret chamber. It reads, slowly, desperately slowly, the remains of passage debris that encumbered the lower part of the doorway was removed. Can you see anything? Q? It's a playful twist on archaeologist Howard Carter's legendary opening of King Tut's tomb. Because what's a spy mystery without a nod to some Indiana Jones-style archaeology? There's a theme here of words with improper spellings, which just means that my videos and cryptos have something in common. But government cryptographers weren't alone in trying to tackle this puzzle. In fact, by the late 90s, members of the public had jumped headfirst into this mystery as well. In 1999, computer scientist and cryptography enthusiast Jim Gilligley publicly announced that he solved K1 through K3 using custom software and brute force methods, making headlines and forcing the CIA to reluctantly confirm that they'd already cracked those same sections internally. This was a big deal because it meant that the public had confirmation that Cryptos wasn't just solvable, but that machines could do it too. Meanwhile, independent cryptographers and amateur codebreakers around the world collaborated online, sharing theories and breakthroughs, and collectively chipping away at the puzzle once thought impossible. Speaking of public fascination, cryptos didn't just capture the attention of amateur cryptographers, it inspired cultural phenomena too, most notably Dan Brown's bestseller novel, The Da Vinci Code, published in 2003, which indirectly drew from the enigmatic aura surrounding cryptos. Brown himself openly cited Cryptos as one of the inspirations behind his intricate puzzles and cryptographic themes. The novel's global success further amplified public fascinations with secret codes, hidden messages, driving even more enthusiasts into the puzzle-solving fray. Suddenly, Cryptos wasn't just a cryptographic curiosity, it became emblematic of our collective symbols and conspiracies hidden in plain sight, blurring the lines between reality, fiction, and the captivating spaces in between. But there was a twist. In 2006, Jim Sanborn himself admitted he had made a small typo in K2 after a member of the public had approached him with the issue. According to Jim, he had originally left out an S for aesthetic reasons. Now that mistake misled solvers briefly, but he claimed that despite this typo, K4 was still solvable. So what about that last puzzle, the infamous final 97 characters of K4? This segment has resisted all decoding attempts despite Sanborn periodically dropping cryptic hints mainly for his own amusement. Something I wonder if he regrets now with AI trying to crack the code. Over the decades, he's teased that K4 includes the words Berlin, Clock, and Northeast, suggesting perhaps another set of coordinates, a compass direction, or even a timing mechanism linked to the bizarre Berlin Clock, which is a notorious digital clock that measures time using colored blocks instead of numbers. Yet despite these breadcrumbs, by 2020, K4 remains unsolved, so Sanborn offered a further bite. K4's solution would be a phrase, not coordinates, not even a name, but an actual phrase. Which, great. Uh, thanks, Jim. Very nice of you. I'm gonna be honest, the more I read about this man, the more he goes on about how he'll need to leave the answer to K4 with a loved one so it wouldn't be lost to the world in case of his death, and yeah, he's starting to sound a little full of himself at this point. Now maybe that high off the smell of your own farts attitude isn't coming out of nowhere. It might even be intentional. But to explain that, we'll have to take a look on what's going on with Cryptos in 2025. Up until now, solving Cryptos has required crazy amounts of patience, watching for patterns, and familiarity with traditional ciphers and decryption techniques. But AI. AI eats patterns for breakfast, and dozens of individuals have been letting Jim know that they've got the AI solution for Cryptos. So that's it. Puzzle busted. K4 is solved and Cryptos is done, right? Well, not according to Jim, but let's put that aside for a moment. If K4 has been decrypted, 
how would that be done with AI? Your average AI model, such as ChatGPT, isn't particularly designed to do this. It might be able to do it with the right kind of prompting, but out of the box, it just wouldn't be suitable. Large language models are designed to handle a wide array of tasks, which is why they can be so useful for different situations. Prepackaged AI models are brilliant for spewing out text, but they might not be exactly what you need when you think of intense cryptographic scrutiny. Therefore, if you tried using AI to decipher cryptos, you'd be better off with something more customized. And that brings us to micromodels. Micromodels are like the special ops forces of AI, smaller, hyper-focused models trained for a very specific purpose. If someone were serious about using AI to crack cryptos, they'd probably build a custom micromodel trained on known cryptographic techniques, historical ciphers, and patterns from K1 through K3. And it wouldn't be just the AI doing the heavy lifting. You'd still need an actual cryptographer to guide it, tweak the approach, and rule out any false positives. If you're a fan of historical AI milestones like me, you'll recognize this as a common trend. A subject matter expert and a developer work much better together than a developer on their own. Now, what about those human errors? Sanborn admitted to a typo in one of the earlier segments, and there are plenty of misspelled words throughout Cryptos. So what if it's in K4 too? AI could spot a sequence that leads to nowhere because of a single misplaced letter as long as the human has informed it of this potential flaw. All of this means that in theory, K4 is entirely breakable through artificial intelligence. So what now? To the public, Kryptos is a work of art, but maybe it never was. Maybe it's a recruitment device. If you work for the CIA and you need to find some of the finest cryptographers in the world, what better way to find them than to leave an unsolvable puzzle in front of your agency and wait for someone to break the code? Recruitment techniques like this have also found their digital counterparts in modern times. Have you ever heard of Cicada 3301? Of course you have. That was a series of ridiculously intricate cryptographic challenges that appeared online from 2012 to 2014 aimed at recruiting top-level codebreakers. It contained layers of cryptography, steganography, and literary, mathematical, and cryptographic illusions. I'll say it with my chest. Cicada 3301 was a recruitment experiment, and Cryptos is the same thing, but a physical version the CIA willingly lays claim to. By saying anyone has solved K4, these three-letter agencies cheat themselves out of potential recruits, just like the original solutions from K1 to K3 came from the CIA and NSA, not the public, the organization gained nothing from publicizing the cracking of it. Instead, they can monitor emails and claims of solutions and then do proper outreach when a valid solution has been reached. Getting this out to the public just kind of ruins the game. Now the other option is maybe you're not an amazing code breaker. Maybe, just maybe, you're really good at social engineering and managed to sneak this answer away from one of the few brains out there holding it. That's another valuable recruit. And so is the person that can build a micro model with the power to break K4, because if you can use AI to uncover this level of obfuscation at home, then you know what you can do around the world. So where does that leave us? Has Kryptos finally been secretly cracked by some three-letter agency already? Well, probably. But publicly announcing that ruins what value it brings to the great game of government. Whether you're a puzzle-solving genius, a master of social engineering, or the creator of a micro-model so clever it could break Kryptos, there is nothing really left to gain from doing so aside from the bragging rights. No secret badges from the CIA. At least, not anymore. Bottom line, Kryptos was never just a sculpture. It is an ingenious trap designed to catch brilliant minds. And if you're thinking about whipping up your own AI to solve it now, hoping for a recruitment call from Langley, I am very sorry, friend. You know how it goes. By the time you're chasing a trend, you're already too late to the game. But you know, there might be something fun in just doing it for the sake of doing it. Maybe we can come back to that for another video. Well, folks, that's going to be it for me today. Join me next time where I show you how to get off those pesky government watch lists. See you, nerds.